Carissimi amici, benvenuti. Ancora una volta siamo qui assieme. Once again we are here together. And we're going to make for you today. Oh, it's going to be spectacular. We're talking about filet of sole with a wonderful piccata sauce. Capers, onion, garlic and then a side dish of beans, garlic and tomatoes. I cannot help myself by saying this is going to be great. Now, stick around. I got to show you this. Nick Stellino's Family Kitchen is made possible by... Funding for this program is provided by Kenmore Elite Appliances. Kenmore Elite, the proud makers of ranges, cooktops, and wall ovens for family kitchens all across America. Additional funding provided by Domino Sugar. Family means everything, and family traditions are sweeter. Domino Sugar helps you create those special memories. Pure cane, sweet memories. Domino will always be your sugar. And by BJ's Wholesale Club, exclusively featuring Rosano, ethnic Italian food products. BJ's Wholesale Clubs, where value comes to life. Additional funding is provided by Larry's Markets and Maurice LaCroix Watches. Okay, here we are. It's about time for us to snap into action. First thing we want to do is to get some wonderful extra virgin olive oil and put it right here in this pan. And in here, we're going to do the beginning of our sauce, salsa piccata. But what is at the base of salsa piccata? We start with garlic. And here I have it. People always say, Nick, how do you cut the garlic? Garlic has to be cut in a certain fashion according to what you intend to use it for. But let me show you what we got going in here. In this particular case, I'm going to cut the garlic fairly thick, as you can see. We want to use this garlic as a base, and this garlic, per se, will be the base ingredient of the sauce. But by the time we get done with this, the garlic will have been cooked so nice, so wonderful, that it will actually melt in your mouth. It is not appropriate in this particular sauce, using the technique that I'm about to show you, to actually chop the garlic. The garlic will burn and will do us very little advantage. You see how thick this is. The reason why we want to do it so thick is because the garlic will color slightly on the outside, still remaining raw on the inside. And slowly, as we braise it together with all the ingredients, we will get the finish that we want. Oh, there it goes. Mm, you know, I'm sorry that I have not yet invented a way to transmit some of this wonderful aroma. Well, this is cooking a little pinch of red pepper flakes to give it some body. And uh, let's go right now. Let's get involved with our onion. Here is a white onion. Here's how you see the white onion. This is how you get it at the supermarket. What we done, we cut it in half. We peeled it, and this is what we are left with. Techniques on how to cut onions. Well, cutting onion is almost an art form. It's an art form because you want to make sure that by the time you get involved with it, you are finished still maintaining the same number of fingers that you went with. A lot of people actually hurt themselves because they're overly ambitious in the cutting of the onion. When it gets to this point, we cut the onion enough. We want to do a fairly thin chopping of this onion. I'm not going to use the whole onion, but just to show you what I mean. You see the pieces, how small they are once they fall in? This is exactly the type of fine chopping that we want to do. And you know, there's nothing wrong once you cut the amount that you want to just dispose of this and put it aside, use it another time. So here we go now with the onion. The onion and the garlic are going to cook together. Oh yes, I love that sound. You hear the sizzling. Ah, fantastic. Fantastico. I'm speaking in tongues. Of course, I'm speaking Italian. That is my native tongue. And here we go. Mixing it well. At this point, a little known trick that not that many people know about, we're going to add our parsley because we want the parsley to cook and toast inside the uh, base. This is the base of our sauce. This is what truly makes it very interesting for us. You see some of the pieces of the garlic which are so brown. Remember what I told you before? Remember, it's only brown on the outside. 
it's still somewhat raw on the inside. And so we continue with the assemblage, using a French word that could actually apply to this. What we're going to do, we're going to really bring out all the elements of the sauce. The next thing, which is extremely important for us, is the capers. Oh, here we go with a wonderful combination of capers. And time has come now to deglaze these ingredients with two liquids, the most important of which is the lemon juice. The lemon juice, which is freshly squeezed, and please pay attention and see how quickly it actually glazes, reduces, and gives us a wonderful finish. Ah, hmm, I wish you could smell this aroma. And it's making such a wonderful glaze. You see what I'm going with this? I like to stir this about. Do I have to? Really, I don't. But it gets me connected with the dish in a way that I absolutely love. Then we go with a little bit of vino. Just a splash, you can use any type of wine, white wine you want. Red wine would not be appropriate for the sauce. Proper piccata does not require the usage of red wine, but I must admit, when you're in the kitchen cooking my recipe, you can do whatever you want. You just have to change the name. You cannot call it Nixtilino Piccata. You have to change it according to your own first name. Next thing we do, we add the chicken stock. We're gonna bring this to a boil. And once it reaches a boil, we'll reduce it down to a simmer. And the sauce is almost there, almost ready to go. While the sauce is cooking, let's concentrate on another very important aspect of what it is that we want to do. And that is the making, the making of the filet of sole. First and foremost, we want to make sure that we get started. And what I have in this pan, we're going to add not extra virgin olive oil, rather extra light olive oil. Why? We really want to fry the filet of sole, which we'll have uh, dipped in eggs and coated with some wonderful breadcrumbs. And we want to make sure that as soon as it gets into that oil, it's completely almost sealed. The way to do that is to ensure that it's very, very hot first and extra light olive oil can take very high temperatures that extra virgin olive oil cannot. So let's get first and foremost to making this magic batter of ours. This is a technique that I like to show. If I don't do it wrong, it's actually quite impressive. I'm going to crack this egg with a single hand. I practiced all night last night and I believe I can actually make it happen. So here you go. Uno. Look at this. That worked. Two. Oh. Ah. There, I knew it. Always something goes wrong. There was a little piece of egg that ended up in there. We mix it up together with a little bit of whipping cream. Reason why I like to add some whipping cream is because it gives it a nice consistency, lighter, and it really, in my opinion, coats the outside of the fish that much better. So this one, believe it or not, is just about done. I will put this aside because I do want to talk about the fish. This is a filet of sole. Uh, sole is typical of the Atlantic, it's typical of the Mediterranean. They go from as small as 8 inches to as big as 29 inches. They actually live in the bottom of the ocean and they float. If I, oh, look what a beautiful piece this is. This is gorgeous just in the color. There is no slime attached to it. The way to know the fish is good, always use your nose. Usually you know that you are somewhat iffy with fish. It's, there is a little slime that usually pokes on the outside of it, but this is absolutely fantastic. Dover sole is the sole that's most famous, uh, mostly from the waters right off of England. And look, bottom and top. And this takes the combination of the fish and the sauce almost in an artistic rendition. I'm going to put this in the egg mixture. We'll save this for later. And I'm going to show you a very quick technique on actually how to coat the uh, uh, wonderful fillets of sole with out touching them. It's almost impossible, but truly believable. I uh, have here a plate on which I put some brown paper. The brown paper, I'm keeping it because later when we take the filet of sole out of the frying pan, that will allow us to actually absorb most of the oil that's left from the frying process of it. So I'm just turning the filet of sole right here in the egg yolks. This is a very simple technique. Very funny, but quite effective. We have it on the breadcrumbs. And what we're doing, we're pushing the breadcrumbs right on top of it. Now, look what I do. I shake this once again so we have an even surface. Put it back in there. Ah. And the first filet, it's done. And I done it without touching it.
put it here on the brown paper. We'll deal with this later on. Let's do and repeat the process with the other fillet. Ooh. Uno, due, tre, quattro. This is something that I enjoy, especially when you make this for a large crowd of people and you have a lot of fillets. This will get you in and out quite quickly and still maintain somewhat clean ends, which at the end of the day, you'll be thankful for this little trick and technique. So here we're done with this. Let's go and check and see if the oil is hot enough for our fish. We want to make sure that it's so hot that it will perform the duties required. So here's the olive oil. I see it smoking. That in itself is almost a guarantee. Now watch how I put the filet in there. You put it in and splashing away from you. This is extremely important. This is where a lot of people make a mistake and they end up getting hurt. Put it in, let it go, splashing away from you. You see how wonderful that is right now and it's cooking and it's picking up exactly the browning that we want to have. Now, I can see on the edges it's gotten nice and brown. What we want to do is to turn it and be very attentive. And once again, on the other side. This is a very thin piece of fish and it cooks very fast. You see that I'm helping myself with this fork. This prevents splashing, also holds it in place because if you simply use this tool and you flip it over, when you flip it over from a certain height, it will splash all the way around. That is no good. And this is pretty much done. I'm gonna put it right here on our plate. Let it rest. The brown paper on the plate is going to absorb the heat as we want it, excuse me, the heat, the, the excess oil. We'll put this aside and I'm going to finish the sauce and show you in just a moment how to plate this wonderful dish. So here we are. The sauce is nice and hot. We are going to reduce it until it gets exactly the glaze effect that we want. All right. Now we're going to finish the sauce. As you can see, the sauce is reduced almost exactly to where we want it to have, but we want to thicken it up a little bit more. I wanted to show you how wonderfully reduced it is, still a little bit on the loose side. How do we finish this? What I have in here is a mixture of butter. We take in two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour. We mixed it, mixed it together to make a roux. <laughs> Ooh, I love to say that word. Now we're going to add it to the hot sauce. We're going to stir it about. And we're going to do a little bit at a time. A lot of people sometimes get too enthusiastic, do this very, very fast, and then they have the sauce almost thickening in front of it too much. But look what happens. As it melts, it goes straight into the uh, bottom of the pan. The flour, together with the butter, it's causing it to thicken slightly. Look at this. This is exactly what I love. Just a touch more, and I would say we're just about there. Mmm, I wish you could just take in this aroma. <laughs> After this, I'm eating. This is going to be my lunch. I'm telling you that much. This is exactly where we wanted to have it. Let's now put this dish together. Let's assemble it. And let me show you how wonderful this is going to be. And here I am with the first filet that I cooked. Aha! We go with the second filet that I cooked. Oh, what a combination. And now it's time to put the sauce on top of it. Oh la la. When you're good, you're good. And you got to give yourself uh, compliments. Guarda, 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 guarda qua che combinazione. Io sono contentissimo, sono altro che. Un pochettino di sugo, a little bit of sauce on the side. I'm sorry, but when I get excited, I start speaking Italian. I almost forget that uh, most of you might not. But this, this is to me what I love. And I absolutely love it. And this sauce is wonderful. There is uh, a certain Piquancy, which is brought together by the wine, by the uh, lemon juice. But the part that's most interesting to me is the capers. For those of you that don't know, capers are an open buds, yes, buds, an open buds of a flowering bush, typical of the Mediterranean. How they one day figured out that this could be used as a spice, I have no idea. But whoever it did, ha, he or she, they were geniuses. And the last thing that we're going to do, we're going to add just a little bit of parsley for decoration. And uh, wow, this is fantastic. Well, stay tuned, because the next thing I'm going to do for you, I'm going to show you a wonderful side dish that will go absolutely perfect with this filet of sole with salsa piccata, and it's so easy to make, you will love it.
Garlic should be stored in a cool, dark place and can be kept for several weeks. Only refrigerate garlic if it is peeled. To learn more, visit nickstellino.com. Okay, here we are, and I'm going to show you a wonderful way to actually make green beans. Well, we have some green beans in here already. What do we do with them? Two ways to go at it. The simplest way is to simply cut them in half, but this is what people with no fantasy do. What I like to do is actually take the ends off. Uh, what does it do? Well, really, nothing much, except that it makes them look prettier. That's about the end <laughs> of that. We put them away, dispose of this excessive beanage, I come up with words on my own, but then again, when you're as gifted as me, you create language as you go along. How do we actually cook them, and why do we steam them? Here is a pot of water. You want to make sure that before you actually put the beans in the steamer basket, and let me show you this. This is called a tulip steamer basket. Very inexpensive. You can pretty much find it anywhere in any supermarket across the country. The water should be, of course, boiling. You put the steamer basket in there. What's interesting about it is this particular one will expand to take the size of whatever pan you have have. Then you simply put the beans in here and you cover it and you let them steam for about three to five minutes. Why do we do it this way? This is a great idea for you to have, especially when you're cooking for a large crowd, because it allows you to do this job way ahead of time, and then when we finish the recipe, all that you have to do is saute them in the garlic, tomato, pine nuts finish that we have. We have some beans that we have already steamed, and I want to put you through the visual of a technique which is quite important, and uh, that is how to actually handle them once they're done. This is a bowl of water, iced water. You can still see some of the ice uh, cubes outside. What we're going to do, first and foremost, always use something to protect your hand when you lift the top of the pan. Why should you do that? Take my word for it. I had done it without before and I still bear the marks of it. Steamer basket, not something to approach with your bare hands. Why? Trust me once again, I know what I'm talking about. We put the beans right in here. And you will notice right away that as the beans are now plunged into the cold water, there is almost a change of color of the beans per se. The change of color is stopping the beans from cooking. They are not cooked all the way through. That's true. We want to maintain that for later once we'll do the saute. But what this will allow us to do is to really get them to the crunchy stage and then we'll be able to finish them in the sauce. We're not done yet. Once the beans have stopped from cooking, you want to drain them real well. That's why I have the setup, the colander inside the ice water and a willing bowl waiting on the side. And we'll keep these beans handy as in just a few moments we are going to make what's the most important part and that is the sauce, the condiment tomato, garlic, pine nuts. Oh, that is wonderful, just thinking about that. Let's put some extra virgin olive oil. Let's get this pan nice and hot. And uh, to start out with, we're going to put some garlic in there. But before I show you how to actually handle the garlic, I want to show you how to peel tomatoes by using a knife. Never seen that before. <laughs> I know. That's why you watch my show, so full of information. But this is challenging because, you see, more often than not, this technique, oh, still some bean pieces here, it's done using a knifing uh, technique that only a few gifted athletes, culinary athletes in this world can do. What can I do? First thing that I do, I actually take the middle of the tomato off. So here's what we started out with. This goes away. Here we do it again with the rest of the tomato. I cut it in quarters, as you've seen. This is not such a scientific endeavor. It's quite easy to make, but it's important that we do this. Otherwise, we will not get to it. There you are. What do we do with the seeds that are left still inside the tomato? I would say don't get too crazy about it. Just use your hands, your fingers, just fish them out. Put them away as we've done right here. And then what I do, I always like to clean up my surface trick that I love, a moist towel. Just move it aside. And if you have, like me, the gift of a disposable tray in which to put all the things that you don't want, the next house that you design, think about that. I invented it, but you can take advantage of it. Now, how do we actually peel the tomatoes? Let me move these pieces away. This is the knife. Be very careful when you do this at home. 
I'm doing this with a chef knife, which makes me somewhat crazy. Most people do it with a bony knife, but look at this. Very careful, don't be in a rush. Keeping the finger is extremely important. And there you are, the skin is off. Let's do it with another piece. Here we go, I'll make it closer to me. Look at this, slight, careful. Know where you're going with this, but don't be overly pushy. And there it is. Let's do it with this other piece right here. See, start with the tip, then you insert it even further. Slow, slow. Nobody is pushing you to do anything you don't want to do. And we are done. Here we go with the skin, and what a wonderful peeling job I did. Why do I pay myself compliments? Ah, I like to. Then we roughly chop the tomatoes in here, and we're gonna use them in just a few moments in our condiment, in the making of our sauce. Oh, yes. Our sauce, it's ready to go. Oh yes, hand gesturing like that is very important. Why is it important? Well, let me tell you about it in a second. First, let's add some of the garlic to the hot olive oil. Oh yes, mmm. Some red pepper flakes. In an unusual move that you've not seen before, at this point I add some of the parsley. Careful because the parsley is gonna start to splatter. Why do we do it? Two reasons. One, to lower down the heat, and two, to really get the oils the parsley, you can use really any type of condiment that you want at this point. It could be basil, it could be rosemary. I think the basil would work better than rosemary in this case, but you'll be the judge of it. You can even add, if you wanted to, you know, capers. Now, the next thing that we do, once we get this nice, wonderful color, we add the tomatoes that we just chopped. Ah, I love the sound that it makes when it gets involved like that. Guarda, guarda, guarda qua che condimento. Then we go with the pine nuts. These pine nuts, the only thing that we've done different to the common pine nuts that you find is that we have slightly toasted them. And this is really bringing us where we want to go. Now, this is the base for the sauce, but it's not the finish and complete dish. Now, we're gonna take advantage of the high heat, and I'm gonna increase the heat a little bit and put the green beans in here. And we're gonna have the green beans picking up the flavor from the garlic the tomatoes, and I'm gonna flip them, watch this. Oh, a little bit more, fantastic. And voila. Let it cook on high heat, and let me assemble my work area in here, because the next thing that I want to do, I really would like to actually show you how to plate this together with the dish assembly that we've done before with the sole. So here we are. Ah, just about ready to go there. Now, what I'm shooting for at this point, I want them to slightly pick up a little bit of burn on the outside. They will sear the outside of the beans. There is an enormous flavor that's coming from the tomato, the garlic, the pine nuts. Just a little quick shot of salt at this point. I'm waiting for the end. I don't want it to be mixed anywhere else. Sea salt if you can. A little bit of pepper to put it on top. A bit more shaking, a bit more flipping of the Stellino technique known as the Stellino shuffle. And ladies and gentlemen, we are ready now to put this together right next to our waiting fish. Uh, now, why is this a good combination that goes so well with our fish? For several reasons. The flavors match extremely well. The green beans and the sole, in my opinion, create a marriage made in heaven. The thing that I like about it is the presence of the tomatoes as well and the garlic that continues the discussion that we did before when we created the piccata flavor of it. Also, extremely important to this is that now we have an interesting uh, contrast between the tenderness, the easiness that the fish does have, the flakiness of the fish itself, which will be matched continuously by the bean. And we're done. This is a very simple recipe fantastic sauce, a great accompaniment, and I hope that you will use it next time you have dinner at home with your family. Ciao. To learn more, visit nickstellino.com. Nick Stellino's Dining Cookbook, including a DVD of favorite recipes, is available for $29.95, plus shipping and handling. To order, 
please call 1-800-937-5387. Nick Stellino's Family Kitchen is made possible by... Funding for this program is provided by Kenmore Elite Appliances. Kenmore Elite, the proud makers of ranges, cooktops, and wall ovens for family kitchens all across America. Additional funding provided by Domino Sugar. Family means everything, and family traditions are sweeter. Domino Sugar helps you create those special memories. Pure cane, sweet memories. Domino will always be your sugar. And by BJ's Wholesale Club, exclusively featuring Rosano, ethnic Italian food products. BJ's Wholesale Clubs, where value comes to life. Additional funding is provided by Larry's Markets and Maurice LaCroix Watches.